What is magic? The question to the answer, or the answer to the question, can only be a subjective one, because everyone defines magic differently. Today I want to talk about my understanding of magic, what energy is driving me as a magician, and my belief that every one of you can be a magician, even without knowing the evil secrets of my craft. I brought you a little old copper cup here. It's totally solid, empty, and very happy. And under there is a little white ball. Now, my objective will be to bring this ball under the cup without you seeing me do it. And you have to say whether you want to play for money or for your mind. That would depend now uh, which you have more of. <laughs> okay, you're not answering, let's take the money. <laughs> so, not under, on top of the cup, but under the cup without you seeing me do it. And you from the extreme right, you make sure that I don't sneak anything under there. So, uh, I'm not allowed to lift or touch the cup. All right. Well, that was pretty quick, <laughs> was it? Maybe that was too quick. I'll do it again from the other side, maybe with a little closer look. Sh shall I tell you how it's? Uh, <laughs> shall I tell you how it's done? Then we got over it. Yeah. There is an invisible trapdoor right here on the top. It looks uh, very solid, but actually you can take the ball and just drop it right through. It looks like this. Look, one, two, three, just right there. Was that two? Uh, oh, okay. Maybe you should even play the three shell game. You know three shell game? Three shells, one ball. You have to guess under which shell the ball is. I reduced the game for you. I only use one shell. Makes it easier to follow. Where's the ball? Under the cup? How much do you bet? 50 euros? <laughs> 20? Nothing. Oh, you would have won. It's a pity, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a second chance. Where's the ball? Under the cup or in my pocket? <laughs> okay, this half goes for the cup. This one goes for the pocket. Now I have to change my direction. If you say a cup, you're wrong. If you say pocket, you're wrong either. So I have possibilities. <laughs> now why is that possible? I'm cheating. I have more than one ball in the game. I have two, no. I, I have not two balls, I have one uh, lemon, as you see. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming, did you? Oh, then maybe you will miss the second one as well. Thank you very much. I can try to bring those back later on. <laughs> now, how's the feeling? Yeah. That's, for me, magic. I'm not talking about the trick you just saw, but about the emotions that were triggered by it. When we as adults experience something extraordinary, something deep emotional, something that we experience for the very first time, in that moment, we are thoughtless. Our mind is overwhelmed. Any judgment of time disappears, and we are just there. And for me, magic is one of the most magical and beautiful ways to produce such a moment, because we are confronted by the inexplainable. We are surprised, maybe even shocked. Where the f came the lemons from? At the same time, our play instinct, our curiosity awake. We want to learn. We ask ourselves the question, how is that possible? because we want to evolve. And as children, we were constantly in that state of wonder, because every day things happened to us that we didn't understand, things that astonished us and we wanted to learn. Oh, oh. Airplane, oh, snow. The older we grew, the more often we experienced those things over and over again, until eventually we stopped wondering about them. Now, my ambition as a magician is to create moments that take us back into that primitive state of astonishment, when we forget our everyday life and just be like children in the here and now. And I'm not only using the art of magic for that, but also different things like hypnosis, storytelling, comedy, even photography, things that makes you wonder. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we as adults are lost. We need magicians, otherwise we can't be happy about the world. I just 
think that it became harder. Because as adults, we have automated most of our daily uh, routines. And that's important. It's human. We need to do that, otherwise we would get crazy. Just imagine you would have to think about what to do every time you drive a car. Steering, changing gears, signaling, watching the mirror, making phone calls. It's impossible. You would get crazy. So those things are perceived by our conscious mind, rehearsed, and then stored in the unconscious. It's like a computer program that runs in the back. Rounds. You don't have to think about it anymore. You don't have to think about blinking your eyes, breathing in or walking. It just happens automatically. So this is a good thing. It makes life easier to create patterns. But on the other hand, it leads easily into a daily routine where we forget to live life consciously. We don't notice the things around us. We miss things that happen along the way. I want you to give you a little demonstration. Um, I have to do this in German because it only works in your native language, and later on I'm going to switch back into English. Ich werde gleich hier was an die Wand projizieren, und ich möchte Sie bitten, dieses Mal einfach für sich leise zu lesen. Einmal lesen, tief ein- und ausatmen, und bitte noch einmal lesen. Und jetzt heben Sie die Hand. Heben Sie die Hand, wenn Sie hier gerade lesen, ein Spatz in der Hand. Heben Sie die Hand. Schauen Sie mal um sich herum, das sind sehr, sehr viele. Aber eigentlich, wenn Sie genauer hinschauen, steht hier ein Spatz in der, der Hand. Zweimal der. I'll do it in English again. I'm going to project the sentence and I want you all to just read it once for you secretly. Just read it once. Take a deep breath in and out. And read it again. And lift your hand if you're just reading a bird in the hand. Lift your hand. Okay, that's one, two, three, three English people around here. <laughs> But actually what it says is a bird in the, the hand. Twice, the. Now why is that happening? We are reading a bird. We are noticing hand. In that moment we are remembering the saying a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And our mind completes. The assumption is false, it's not reality. Now, of course, the quick recognition of writing is important for us, otherwise we would read like first graders, a bird, in, you know what I mean. But on the other hand, we complete things that they're not there. We miss things along the way. We are not conscious. Now, those patterns, although natural and human, um, can be broken up. You can bring into your everyday life a magical energy. Tomorrow morning, you don't take a hot shower, but a cold one. And you don't brush your teeth with your right hand, but with your left. If you're left-handed, take the right hand. And you drink coffee? Tomorrow you don't. You drink fresh, squeezed orange juice. When you drive to work, take another route than you're used to. If you're walking, Walk very slowly. Do things that you usually don't do. Because the moment we interrupt our pattern, something amazing will happen. Our conscious mind will switch on again. Well, something is different, pay attention. And we will perceive the world around us consciously and freshly again. Now, what do, what do I do in interrupt my pattern? I travel. Every year I take my backpack, I choose one country, buy myself a guidebook, a ticket, I enter the plane. Without a plan, without a goal. I just let myself be guided by the people that I meet, by the things that happen to me. And this way, my, trick is dictated, my trip is dictated by the energy of that specific country. Spontaneity is the word which leads me. And so I experience things that I would never have experienced back home. Things that are outside of my comfort zone. And some of those moments, some of those unique moments I encountered, uh, I brought some pictures to show you. And I only noticed them because I was aware. I was looking for something magical around me. And when I got it, I took a snapshot. So this is me, like, traveling 
with a backpack right there. I arrived, it was in India, I was arriving there and a friend sat on top and when I was arriving, he took that picture of me. It's the golden temple of Amritsar for the religious Sikh people. Uh, they're not Sikh, um, Sikh is a religion. <laughs> A remote village in India as well. I was passing through this village and I suddenly saw that girl in front of me with this big bike. It was um, really magical for me. Uh, they roast seeds here in Lao. We just passed there by to, to swim at a lake. I just, just saw that scene and I stopped and just took that picture. There was a uh, trekking through the mountains of Lao and we met this fellow. He was very, very proud of his two frogs that he I think eventually we'll eat. Yeah. And I said, well, hold them up. And he was giving me that smile, which still yeah, is in my heart all the time. The temple of rats in India. I felt like in Jana Jones. You're walking around everywhere there are rats. If you sit down, they crawl up to you. It's a really crazy thing there. And that is Lao as well. I was staying in that village up in the mountains. And those people, they never see foreign people. So the girls and the women, they were disappearing when they saw me. They were afraid of me. And uh, it's very hard to catch them on photos. You have to ask, and only very few women allow this to happen, like this woman. And I still dream of this face in, in the night because I look at this face and I was standing in front of her just looking at this gaze and those eyes were so warm and she was looking at me the same. She was talking like, oh, it was like you're looking at, zoo at each other, yeah? because we were so amazed by those people up there. The forest in Laos as well. It was up in the mountains of, uh, of Madagascar. And this was a funny thing, because I stayed there and I wanted to perform for the magic. And it took me more than half an hour to get the children close to me because they really were afraid of me. They disappeared as soon as I came closer to them. Uh, but then eventually I got them next to my side and performed some things for them. And then I realized when I performed this magic for them that those children will remember for the rest of their life what they have just seen. They have never seen something like that in their life before. So well, they will tell their children that there once was a crazy white man taking a leaf from the tree and making money out of it. It's a great feeling. <laughs> India is different. They, they're not shy. They just go for you. Even the buffalo on the right is watching my magic. Yeah? Yeah. And this is Tom. On my trips, I meet special people who inspire me because they broke their pattern. Tom was traveling at that time uh, through whole South and Middle America with his bike. This is a motorbike at that time with a bike. And he just had one arm. So he was traveling there with one arm on his bike, packing and unpacking his bike, putting up the tent, cooking everything with one arm. And I wanted to know how it feels like. So I told myself, my arm is paralyzed. Like him, it was paralyzed, it was not gone, just paralyzed. My arm is paralyzed as well. So I walked like that, I put it in a table, I slept with this arm paralyzed. And everything was an adventure. Even putting the toothpaste on the toothbrush was an adventure. Everything was different. And after one week, I told myself, my arm is working again, and that was like Christmas. Everything I touched, everything was so beautiful, and I feel good to be healthy. So try out yourself. One day, you have a paralyzed arm. Nice feeling. This fellow had the same idea 32 years ago. He holds up his right arm since 32 years. He said to himself, well, I don't need this arm, so I hold it up. As you can see, 32 years at that time. You can't take it down anymore. This guy is different, he's just standing up. It's a standing Baba. The one before was Ek Bahu Baba. Baba are the holy man in India. This one is a standing Baba. He's only standing. He never sits down, he never lies down. I don't know why, but it's magic. <laughs> and the last one is one of the most magical things that I have encountered. This is a Sangoma. Sangoma, those are the witch doctors in South Africa. And uh, not yet. <laughs> well, first story, the story of how I met her. I was traveling at Coffee Bay. I was passing by Coffee Bay, the garden route. And I was taken to a ceremony where a white woman from Europe became a Sangoma, became one of the inner circle. What was very special, because usually 
it's only men and only black men, but never white. So I was taken to the mountains of the guy who knew about the, the festival, and people were just colorful, they, they were singing, they were dancing, they were reading scripts, um, cattle were slaughtered, and at one point, it was like a ceremony, all the old Sangoma sat with a white woman in a circle. And this lovely lady, she came into that circle carrying a banana leaf. And then she pulled out a razor-thin fiber from that banana leaf and showed some of the most magical things that I have ever seen. Lift your energy in trying out new things. Don't stop playing around and be conscious of the things that happen around you. If you do, you will have many more magical moments that will enrich you and your surroundings. Thank you very much. <laughs>